video, I'm planning on going over heating and cooling curves and then doing a couple of example problems. So first of all, what is a heating and cooling curve? So we've already been talking about the, we've been talking about materials that change temperatures. So for instance, let's say we have a piece of aluminum, we're adding heat to it. We could calculate how much heat is added if we know the mass, the specific heat, and the change in temperature. So we've been calculating things where the temperature is changing. So let's just look at a, a heating and cooling curve. So let's say, so this axis here is the temperature and this axis here is the heat. So if you're going up on this axis, you're increasing the temperature. If you're going this way on, or to the right on this axis, you're adding heat. So now let's draw what a heating or cooling curve would look like. So we, <clears throat> so we go up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw the curve and then I'll write, I'll label everything after. So I'm just gonna draw this. Okay, so let's add some temperatures. I'm gonna say that this, this point right here is at zero degrees Celsius. And this point right here is at 100 degrees Celsius. So let's say we're looking at water. So this would be a heating curve for water. So when we're right here, remember that at, so if, if water is below zero degrees Celsius, it's, it, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So right here, this is a solid. So if you're in, on this portion of this curve, you have a solid if you look at the temperature. If you're on this portion of the curve right here, this so you, you go from a solid to a liquid. So if you're between zero degrees and 100 degrees Celsius with a liquid or with water, you have a liquid here. And then if you go over 100 degrees, you have a gas or vapor. <clears throat> so this line right here, the straight line, this represents the melting point if you're going up, like if you're increasing your temperature. If you were decreasing your temperature, this would indicate the freezing, so melting or freezing. And then this line right here, this would indicate boiling. So the water is boiling on this curve and it's vaporizing. Or if you were going the other way, so say you're, you're decreasing the temperature or removing heat, this would be condensing. So it's converting from a gas or vapor back to a liquid. So one thing to notice with this is what if, if, let's say we have a solid, say we have ice, and we increase the temperature to zero degrees Celsius. We can continue to add heat and the temperature isn't going to change until all of whatever you have is melted. So uh, until, so if you have a piece of ice, you can, you, you add heat until it reaches zero degrees Celsius and then it will start to melt. And as it's melting, you'll continue to add heat but it's not the temperature of what you have. So you'll have basically a mix of ice and water as it's melting. The temperature is gonna stay at zero degrees. And then once you have all liquid, the temperature will once again start to rise. So as if you can, so once you have, so say your ice is com melted completely, now you only have liquid. As you continue to add heat and increase the temp your temperature will start to increase so see the that we're adding heat temperature is increasing and we have a liquid but then once it reaches 100 degrees celsius the it'll start boiling and vaporizing so at this point you're going to have a mix of water and of liquid water and vapor water 
And while it continues to boil, as long as you still have liquid water, the temperature is not going to change. So your temperature while water is boiling stays at 100 degrees Celsius, even as you continue to add heat. Because you need, you need to add heat for the molecules to have enough energy to vaporize. So you add heat and the temperature doesn't change, but the water continues to convert to a vapor or gas. And then once all of your water is vaporized, so you only have vapor, the temperature, if you continue to add heat, the temperature will once again start to rise. So this is, <clears throat> so this shows um, going through the, so what we've been looking at so far with calculating heat is we've been looking at if we have a solid or if we have a liquid or if we have a gas or vapor and we have a temperature change. And so that's where we would apply the Q is equal to MCAT. So we're adding heat um, the, or the, and the temperature is changing. But when we have a phase change, things behave a little bit differently because even though you're adding heat, or in the case of, uh, so if you're adding heat, then you're, um, then you're going, I guess, to the right on this curve. So you go from a solid to a liquid to a gas. You're changing phases. And so when you change phase, while, the, while your material is changing phase, the, the temperature doesn't change. So for instance, if you're boiling water on the stove until you've vaporized all of the water, that water is at 100 degrees Celsius. So this, so that, so that would indicate this point right here on this curve. So now let's say you're going the other direction. So this would be the heating curve because you're um, heating your material. If you're going the other direction, let's say you have a gas or a vapor and here heat is being removed from it. So it's losing heat and it's going to, once it reaches 100 degrees, so say it cools off to 100 degrees, at that point it's going to start to condense or convert back to a liquid. And while it's condensing, it's going to remain at 100 degrees Celsius even though heat is still being removed. So it'll come over here and once it reaches, once all of the vapor is a liquid, so there's no more vapor, the temperature of the liquid will begin to drop. So as you continue to lose heat, now the temperature is dropping until you get to 100 degrees Celsius and this water starts freezing or turning into a solid. So while the water is freezing, it, the, the um, ice water mixture is going to remain at zero degrees Celsius until all of the water is frozen. Once all of the water is frozen, if you continue to lose heat, the temperature will start dropping off from zero, from zero degrees Celsius, so the temperature will decrease even lower in your solid. So if you're going this direction on this curve, this is called a cooling curve. So that's the difference between the heating and cooling curves. They're basically the same curve. It's just that on one of them you're um, moving, you're adding heat and going from a solid to a liquid to a gas. And on the other one you're removing heat and you're going from a gas to a liquid to potentially a solid. And then you just need to remember that while you're changing phase, even though you may still be adding or removing heat, the temperature doesn't change. And so we need to use a different method to calculate what Q is during these phase changes. So I'm going to talk about that next with this um, term called heat of fusion. So what heat of fusion is, is it's the amount of heat released when one gram of liquid freezes. So this is the amount of heat released when one gram 
of liquid freezes. And this also happens to be the amount of heat you need to melt one gram of solids. So amount of heat to melt one gram of solid. So it takes, so the heat of fusion is the same. That, that would be this point right here. So you're either melting or freezing. But the heat of fusion is the same, whether you're, go whether you're going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid. And so this is the amount of heat that is required to either freeze or melt one gram of that substance. And so for water, and these heats of fusion are something that you'll be able to look up on a table, so you don't need to memorize these. But for water, the, this heat of fusion is, so let's say we have, um, let's say we have a piece of ice. So we have water. This S means that it's a solid. And then we need 80 calories per gram of heat to convert to a, to a liquid. So H2O and this L means that this is a liquid. And so this is 80 calories per gram. Remember that for energy, in this case heat, um, this can also be in joules. So this happens to be 334 joules per gram. So the 334 joules per gram and the 80 calories per gram are the same. They're just different units. So this is the heat of fusion. Um, and then let's say that, so this is if you are going from a solid to a liquid. So this is if you're melting water. Let's say that you're going from a liquid to a solid. So we have H2O and it's a liquid. And then we're going to go to a solid. So we have H2O. Now it's a solid, but we have also released this amount of heat. So this is, so we've released 80 calories per gram of heat to go from the liquid to the solid. When we're going from the solid to the liquid, we're gaining that heat. And when we go from the liquid to the solid, we're losing that heat. So let's do a really quick example. How many joules are needed to melt 32 grams of water? So let's say that we have 32 grams of H2O, and we want to know how many joules are needed to melt this. So how many joules? And I'm going to actually say to um, melt. <clears throat> so this is a, this is ice. So we have ice. We have 32 grams of ice. We want to know how many joules we need to melt that ice. So all we do is write down the 32 grams. So we have 32 grams. And then we know that, so we're going from a solid to a liquid. And we need 334 joules per gram of heat to melt that ice. So we have 32 grams. And so we just need to multiply this by the heat of fusion. So 334 joules per gram. And we know that we did this right because the grams cancel since we have grams here and then grams on the bottom here. And we're just left with joules. And that's what we want is joules. So this is equal to 10,688 joules. Okay, so this is the heat of fusion. Now I want to talk about the heat of vaporization. And I'm going to try and do that kind of small over here because I don't want to erase all of this yet. So put this back. So heat. Okay, so heat of vaporization. So as you might guess, the heat of fusion is for this point right here on, on our curves. For the heat of vaporization, that means that we're at this point. So, the, so we're either 
going from a liquid to a gas, so we're vaporizing, or we're going from a gas to a liquid, so we're condensing. And this is defined pretty much the same way as the heat of fusion, except for with this one, we're referring to vaporization or condensation. And so this is the amount of heat absorbed to change one gram of liquid to a gas. So amount of heat absorbed to change one gram of liquid to a gas. And then it's also the amount of heat released to change one gram of gas to a liquid. So amount of heat to change one gram of gas to a liquid. And in this case, the heat would be released. So when you're going from a liquid to a gas, the gas is at a higher energy level. So you're adding energy to go from, or you're adding heat to go from a liquid to a gas. And when you go from a gas to a liquid, you're removing heat. So for, uh, so the heat of vaporization for water is, and I guess I'll just try and let's see. I'm just going to write this right here. <clears throat> so the heat of vaporization for water. So we have H2O and we have a liquid and we're converting to a gas. So this is plus. So the heat of vaporization is 540 calories per gram or if in joules, this is 2260 joules per gram. And this will convert to a gas. For condensation, it's it's similar to um, it's similar to what we did here, where we had heat. So we have the heat of fusion. So we're either going from so with this one we're going from a solid to a liquid. With this one we're going from a liquid to a solid. So with this one I just wrote we're going from a liquid to a gas. So for condensation, we're going from a gas to a liquid. So we have H2O as a gas. And we're going to lose heat this time. So it's going to go to H2O as a liquid. So I put an L plus 540 calories per gram. OK, I guess I'm going to erase the heat of fusion. OK, so I want to do a quick example problem with using this. So let's say that we have 50 grams of steam that are released from a volcano. So we have 50 grams of steam. And it doesn't really matter how we get the steam. In this example, it says it's released from a volcano. But it condenses at 100 degrees Celsius. And we want to know how many kilojoules are released. So how many kilojoules of heat are released for 50 grams of steam to condense to a liquid. So we can do this the same way as before. This time we're using the heat of vapor vaporization instead of the heat of fusion because we're going from a gas to a lick or a vapor to a liquid. So I want to write down the 50 grams just because that's the amount that I'm working with. And then this is asking for the value in joules rather than calories. So we want to use the we want to use the joules. And this is so this 540 here. This is equal to 2260 joules per gram. So this is the same this 540 and 2260 are the same. They're just different units. So don't get confused by that. So we have 2260 whoops, joules per gram. And then, to write this a little bit better, 2260. And then we, 
no, so the grams are going to cancel because we have grams on the top, grams on the bottom. So that's how we know we did this, we're doing this right, because right now we, we're ending it, we have joules, which we're looking for heat, so that's joules is the unit that we want. So let's say that you wrote this and your grams didn't cancel out. Then you know you're probably using this heat of vaporization wrong, or you're using the wrong value because you want you you're if you're using the right um, the right values, your units will cancel out and you'll get the units that you want. And this says that it wants our answer in kilojoules. So we want to do a com we need to do a conversion from joules to kilojoules. So there's and we want joules is on the top, so we want joules on the bottom over here so it cancels. So there's 1000 joules per kilojoule. And this is equal to 113 kilojoules. And then there's a couple other terms I want to give you. We're not going to do problems with sublimation and deposition, but sublimation means that you're converting from a solid to a gas. So the way that this can happen is, let's say you have dry ice. So dry ice is CO2 in the solid form, and we all know that dry ice doesn't melt to a liquid. It turns into a vapor. That's why it looks cool. And so dry ice sublimates, so it converts from a solid to a vapor or to a gas at negative 78 degrees Celsius. And other examples of when sublimation might occur is sublimation occurs frequently at high altitudes, so snow can sublimate directly into water vapor. And this happens at high altitudes because, first of all, there's low pressure, so it's easier for the for water to change, say, from, uh, from the solid to a vapor. There's wind and sunlight, so those all help with the sublimation process. And then deposition, this is converting from a gas to a solid. So I'm just going to say with, with sublimation, this is solid to gas. And with deposition, this is gas to a solid. And we've all seen this happen. This happens with frost, like water vapor is turns into a solid ice. And this also happens with snow rhyming. So we've all seen this. It just seems a little bit weird because we're used to um, water going from solid to a liquid to a gas or gas to a liquid to a solid. So we're not going to do any problems with these. I just wanted you to know what they were. Okay, so now I want to erase the board and do an example problem the showing how we're going to combine what we've already learned. So when let's say that we're like let's say that we're right here. Like we have a solid that's at negative 20 degrees Celsius. We heat it up and then we melt it. So we need to figure out what the heat is for both heating this and then also the heat that we add to melt it. And so this is combining what we've already done because what we've already we've already calculated so the q is equal to m cat is to calculate the heat added or lost when you're when you're either a solid liquid or gas and so I'm going to erase this real quick and then I'll tell you what the problem is okay so I left this diagram here so we can refer to it but let's say that we have a uh, um, so let's say we have liquid ethanol so we have a liquid, and this time we have ethanol instead of water. So I'm going to actually take the temperatures off this because the, the freezing and boiling points for ethanol are different from water. And so we have liquid ethanol. We have 15 grams. So I'm going to just write that down as the mass is equal to 15 grams. And it's at... Let's see, so it's at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the, let's see, 
Well, so it says calculate the total heat in joules needed to convert 15 grams of liquid ethanol at 25 degrees Celsius. So 25 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature initial to a gas at its boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius. So the boiling point is 78 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> okay, so what we're doing is we have li we have liquid ethanol. So we're right here somewhere, like it's it's somewhere in this region, and it's at 25 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to write that, and then I'm going to get a different marker color for a minute. <clears throat> so we're right here on this curve, and it says that. Oh, and then the boiling, so I'm going to put the boiling point on here as well, because the boiling point is right here. So this is 78 degrees Celsius. And so we're right here at 25 degrees Celsius. It says that we have a liquid. So what we're doing is we're going, we're adding heat. So we're increasing the temperature because we're not changing phase until it reaches the boiling point. So this is a liquid until it reaches 78 degrees. And then once it reaches 78 degrees, this so that the problem is asking, um, so we're converting this to a gas. So we're going to boil this until it, until all of the ethanol is converted to a gas. So we're, we're going from here to here. <clears throat> and when you're doing these problems, I recommend drawing these curves because it's, e it's easier to see what you need to do if you can visualize what's happening with this curve. Okay, so we're converting this to a gas. So um, we want to calculate the total heat in joules to convert to to convert this liquid to a gas. So we're starting here with the liquid, raising the temperature to the boiling point, and then we're boil we're continuing to add heat while it boils until it's all until it's all converted to vapor. So the heat that we're calculating, if we come down to here, is this amount. So we have the heat that was added on the curve here where we were raising the temperature and then we have the heat that's added while it's boiling and vaporizing. So we need to calculate this in two different parts. So we have the total, what we want to calculate is the total heat and this is equal to the heat to warm the ethanol from 25 degrees Celsius to 78 degrees Celsius plus because this that calculates this part right here plus we have the heat needed to change phase from the liquid to the gas so heat during phase change And this is a liquid to a gas. So I'm going to erase some stuff real quick. So let's calculate this one first. This should look pretty familiar. These are problems we've been doing with the Q is equal to MCATs. It needed to, to warm the ethanol from 25 degrees to 78 degrees. So if we write down Q is equal to MCAT, Remember, so we need the heat equation to calculate this. So we're calculating Q. We know the mass. The mass was given to us. It's 15 grams. And the I'm going to put down a few quantities as well. So the specific heat of ethanol is equal to 2.46 joules per gram 
degrees Celsius, and then the heat of vaporization. And remember, this is something that you would get off a chart, so this isn't something you should have memorized. Both of these you would get off charts. So the heat of vaporization for ethanol is 841 joules per gram. Okay, so now we, so we have Q is equal to MCAT, we have the mass, now we need the specific heat, which is, whoops, 2.46 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and then our temperature change is um, 78 degrees, well, it's 25 degrees to 78 degrees, so we have 78 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius, and this is equal to uh, well, actually, let's look at our units first. So the grams cancel and the degrees Celsius cancel. So we're left with joules, which is the unit that we want because this is asking for the total heat in joules. So this is equal to 1960 joules. Okay, so that's this first part. Now we want to do the second part. And so the second part is the one that's new. So this is the phase change. So we have the we have the amount, it's 15 grams, and we know how much heat we need to go from a liquid to a gas per gram. It's 841 joules per gram. So this is 841 joules per gram. The grams cancel, so we're left with joules, which is the unit that we want. So this is most likely right, and this is equal to 12,600 joules. Now all we do, so and that was this, so now all we need to do is add these together. So we have the total heat is equal to 12,600 joules plus 1,960 joules, and this is equal to 14,560 joules. So this is the total heat required to heat liquid ethanol from 25 degrees Celsius to 78 degrees Celsius and then convert it from a liquid to a gas. Okay, I want to do one more example, so I'm going to erase the board real quick. In this example, we have a volcano erupting, so I'm going to write, we have a volcano, and there's, it releases 175 grams of steam at 100 degrees Celsius, so put releases 175 grams of steam, so this means it's water vapor, at 100 degrees Celsius. What we want to calculate is how many kilojoules are lost when the steam condenses and then freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So um, kilojoules of heat lost to condense, so the steam condenses, then freezes. So let's go look at what's happening on this curve. So first of all, we have 175 grams of steam at 100 degrees Celsius. So that means we're here. We need to condense all of that steam. So we're going to this point. And so we're losing heat from the steam but it's not changing temperature. It's 100 degrees Celsius until all of the steam condenses to a, a liquid. Once all of the steam is a liquid, it will lose heat until it reaches 100 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to take these off. So this is 100 degrees Celsius here and 0 degrees Celsius here because we have water. So once this freezes, so we and we want to, um, so we're looking at freezing all of this steam. So this is going to go to here. So we've frozen all of the steam at zero degrees Celsius. So we're going from this point 
to here, to here, to here. So we have three things that we need to calculate with this. And I, I want to also just put this in. So the heat that we're calculating is this. So we're, go we're going from here to here, and this is the heat that we're going to lose. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the amount of the amount of heat lost when the steam condenses, the amount of heat lost to change temperature from 100 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius, and the amount of heat lost to go from a to change phase from a liquid to a solid. So we're going to calculate three things, and to get the total heat, we just add these three parts together. So for the first one, this is the heat released as steam condenses. And this is equal to, so we have 175 grams of steam, so I'm going to put that in. We have 175 grams of steam that we need to condense from a vapor to a liquid. What we need to use here is the heat of vaporization because we're going from, a, from a, a vapor to a liquid. So this is equal to, and we want to use the one that's in joules because we want our final answer to be in kilojoules. So this is equal to 2260 joules per gram. The grams cancel. So we're left with joules, and this is equal to 39,000, or sorry, 395,500 joules. And I'm going to convert this to kilojoules at the very end. So I'm just going to leave this in joules for now. So now we need, to, so we've calculated this, the heat for this section. Now we need to calculate the heat for the temperature change to cool the liquid from 100 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. So heat released as liquid cools. So for this one we're not changing phase, we're just changing temperature of a liquid. So for this one we use the Q is equal to MCAT and this is equal to, we have 175 grams multiplied by the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And the temperature change is we're going from 100 to 0. I'm just going to write this as 100 degrees Celsius minus 0 degrees Celsius. Since we're losing heat, remember the Q would be negative, and so when we multiply through the negative, it's just going to change the sign on these. So I'm just going to write them as this for, for this problem. So this is equal to 700 or 73,220 joules. And we can check the units, the grams cancel, and the degrees Celsius cancel, so we're left with joules. So the last, so now we're here. Now we need to calculate the phase change from the liquid to the solid. So we need the, well actually I'm going to write, so heat released as liquid freezes. And so this, so I'm going to just say Q is equal to 175 grams. And then since we're freezing, so we're converting from a liquid to a solid, we need the heat of fusion this time. So that is, for water, that is 334 joules per gram. The grams cancel. And this is equal to 58,450 joules. Okay, so now we have the heat that was released for each of these three parts. So now we just, to get the total heat, now we just add them together. So Q total, and I'm just putting total on the Q to indicate that that's the total heat, is equal to um, 395 
8,500 joules plus 73,220 joules plus 58,450 joules. And this is equal to 528,000 joules. And then if we convert this to, so we, we actually wanted the answer in kilojoules. So to convert this to kilojoules, there's a thousand joules per one kilojoule. So the joules cancel and that is equal to 528 kilojoules. So it takes 528 kilojoules to convert 175 grams of steam to a liquid and then to freeze it. Summary to do these problems where, and you'll be able to recognize these problems because you'll have a phase change. If, if you don't need to, so if you, can, if you can just use the heat equation, you won't have a phase change. So if you have a phase change, you need to use the heat of vaporization or the heat of fusion to calculate your heat, either gained or released. And if you don't have a phase change, you just use the heat equation. Q is equal to MCAT. So I think the easiest way to do these problems is to read the problem and, well, you draw this diagram and then read the problem and then figure out what you're doing on this diagram because this will graphically tell you exactly what you need to calculate and then just add your values together. So I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.